update your profile make sure the email address that you used in applying you use the same email address to take the test so that it will be easy for the team to track your result um people apply with let's say adramansa at yahoo.com and whilst taking the assessment they would use a different email like kojomenu at gmail.com these are two different email addresses so please help us to make our work very easy and um the with front end and back end the person's score is for one to solve two questions correctly you have four questions so you need to solve two questions correctly before um, we can proceed with you so once you um, we receive your assessment score code signal would have to verify your test once it's verified then we invite you for a technical interview for all the specializations so if it's front end back end quality assurance and um you are you you'll be invited for a technical interview that will last for an hour approximately and you'll be asked questions based on your choice of specialization so if it's front end the questions will be tailored to front end development and not back end if it's back end it will be tailored to back end questions if it's ui ux the same and if it's quality assurance too you'll be asked questions based on um, quality assurance just to know your um, knowledge and not to fail you so please um let's all take note of the um, recruitment process if you have any questions kindly put in the chat box and we would answer you thank you all right thank you so much sarah um so like i mentioned early on we have experts who will speak on the various specializations so we'll start with um front-end development so we have emmanuel asabir He's one of our trainers here at the training center at Amalitech. So he'll take us through the front end development, anything we need to know about it, the skills required and the criteria and everything we would, would need to know, yeah, to make a solid application. So Emmanuel, if you are here, could you take us through this? Um, thank you very much, Chris. Um, so my name is Emmanuel. I'm a senior trainer here at Amalitech with a focus on front-end development. So basically, um, the requirement to be a front-end engineer part of this training is that you should already have um, some proficiency with JavaScript, right? So just like Sarah was saying, the application process is quite simple. You apply and then um, you, you'll be sent a link to take a test the test is mainly on data uh, data structures and algorithm um, just some straightforward test after you pass you, you get a pass mark then you'll be invited into um, you'll be invited into an interview a technical interview where you have to answer some HR related questions and then um, the technical bit of the interview so our focus mainly for this training is not on teaching language specific um, concepts right so we want to we're going to be handling more of engineering concepts so things like maybe how to do object manipulation without focus being uh, spent on let's say language specific um, ideas right but the framework will mostly be focusing on is angular so that is what we'll be doing and you should already know um how to do how to do your html css because we are really not starting from that level where we're going through html css we'll just do a quick recap on some javascript concepts but basically that is that and uh, it's a it's an in person and some of the studies you have to do um you have to do um, self-paced and then there's also the instructor-led version of, of it. So um, I think, I don't know if there are any questions then I can answer, but so far I think these are, this is what I can say so far for the front end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. I believe um, moving forward, when we have the questions, you'll be able to cover up all the others we're not able to mention. So um, we'll have 
our back-end development experts. He's in the person of Thomas Dark. He's also a senior trainer here with us. And so Emmanuel, Thomas, if you are here with us, could you take us through the skills and the requirements for submitting a good application for the back-end development? Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me. My name is Thomas, responsible of back-end engineering. So the question is, what will it take me to become a back-end engineer or a trainee in the back-end specialization? Whenever you ask this question, the number one answer is, you need to be an engineer. I mean, you have to take an engineering course or program at the tertiary level either HND or degree okay so if it is mechanical engineer or any sort of engineering that involve writing a little bit of programming mathematical concepts then it means you are almost qualified secondly you need to have an exposure with software development you can be an engineer but if it happens that after maybe you are not a soft you didn't do computer science or computer engineering you did any other engineering program but with zero exposure to software development then it means you cannot be qualified you cannot pass the screening phase but if it happened that maybe you don't have proper exposure but I mean by exposure, either you've undergone some formal or informal training, okay, in any other institution that we have in the country, or self-taught. You've bought course on Udemy, you've learned how to data structure algorithm or how to do anything related to software programming for a minimum of a year, a minimum. It means you can come from any background but you did your national service in an IT company where they are much more into software development and other stuff you are also qualified but the number of exposure should be minimum a year and also of course you need to finish your national service okay now aside all this you have to pass through the GCA the GCA is general coding assessment and it is mainly data structure and algorithm your problem solving approach okay your the way you think as a, an engineer to solve a problem that is what we are assessing over there and if you have a hand-on experience you know how to write code we are open you can use any programming language of your choice to write that text and if you solve at least two problem then you are qualified now once you pass that level we will have an interview with you because you know technically not everyone can get that cut of what or will be able to solve two problem meanwhile the person is a good programmer he has a good portfolio he has work he has built stuff then it means we need to have a one-on-one -on -one session with that person talk with the person try to understand how well does the person understand software development as far as backend is concerned what are the various stuff you've worked on so that one it will depend on how you enter into the game or the level of to which you present yourself that will be the same level we will carry the whole process okay so if you brand yourself as an expert then we'll fly at a, an expert level okay so based on the insight to gain it will help us to make a final decision this person can make it to the training program or not and if you have a java exposure that would be the best but it doesn't mean we are looking for java engineer the whole program as far as the back end is concerned will be in java so a prior knowledge in that will be very nice but if you don't have but you work with node.js c sharp php any server side script, scripting language is accepted now whenever you start you will join us 
at the early stage we will now walk you through the java development we will walk you through you know in a period of two weeks already you will see that <laughs> you are really a java developer who will really push you blast you with 1001 exercise and quizzes so be ready to learn beyond you know the normal eight hours we will really stretch you because if we stretch you at the early stage it will help you to expand and then have this mindset of a software engineer and you'll be able to accommodate the rest of the contents that we are going to consume and it will prepare you so i don't want to speak much but just to give you an idea about how it's gonna be and subsequent questions will help me to elaborate more on the various areas you would like to understand better thank you very much thank you thomas um we have our next expert he's into quality assurance engineering it's francis asante if you are here could you take this for us all right hello everyone good afternoon all right so i'm francis uh, the instructor for quality assurance all right so quality assurance is basically uh, determining whether a product meets the required requirements or the specified requirements now at a Malitech or in most instances i'm sure some of you have been uh, uh, following reviews of products and services and there are instances where reports indicate that there are bugs or there are so i think people will have to uh, take a critical look at now quality assurance is not only employed in the software development industry in fact in many industries in the world however the reason why it has become important or critical for people to move into quality assurance is to help in the user experience so for instance let's say you have your atm card you go to the atm and files withdrawing the amount that you are supposed to get that is really tripled and eventually becomes a problem so these are the reasons why quality assurance has become really important for every sector in the world however at amalitech initially quality assurance was done uh, internally but with the need for uh, quality assurance we thought it wise to expand it for our trainees to also go through uh, go through this training so that they also become expert in that area now for the recruitment process it is basically open to everyone so far as someone has at least a minimum of uh, knowledge in one programming language probably javascript python or java now there are instances where um, I think recruitment was saying that people were calling to ask why they are supposed to uh, undertake a programming, sorry, a coding assessments. I mean, as part of our absolute test, there's one coding question. In fact, the reason is that everything is becoming automated, and as part of becoming a quality assurance expert or an engineer, it is also important to have some knowledge in programming. And this, this is to help with automation processes of all the, all the software that we use. Again, so when you are able to go through the recruitment process and qualify to be a trainee for the quality assurance, foremost, you'll be taken through intro to web development. So this is basically to help you understand uh, how the web uh, works. And then you'll be also taken through a QA mindset, so basically, the, the ideology behind QA and then you go through the QA fundamentals and then that is when you start with the automation process itself but before even then you're also going to go through API testing and also databases and the rest all right so basically it will be important that even before you apply at least you have some knowledge in web development that the interest is okay so for instance you should be able to build simple web pages using html css then maybe you can add some interactivity using javascript also if you are knowledgeable in either python or java it is fine because the the main goal of a malitech is not just to uh, train or have manual testers in fact the end goal is to have 
career that we uh, that is termed as software development engineer in test and so of course we're going to start with the manual testing but eventually you should be able to to delve into the software development engineer in test i mean so this is the reason why it is important that even before you apply you should have or you should knowledge upon at least one programming language at the moment some of the tools that we use for automation are cypress playwright selenium and others i mean these are the ones that for now we are focusing on also it's also be important that uh, the person who is knowledgeable in git and github maybe a browser a developer tools i mean these are basic things not at advanced level but unfortunately if you don't have any of these skills and you apply in fact it will be very difficult for you to go through and so anyone who is really interested in quality assurance i mean advise at least you have all these basic skills before applying probably if you don't you under a, a good fit at this time i mean you can start doing or you can start becoming a self-taught programmer and i'm sure by next year you should be able to have some basic skills to apply again on the soft skills too we want people who have uh, i mean skills relating to attention to details who are able to collaborate properly who are also able to communicate very well because the quality assurance engineers are the one who usually i mean check the requirements with <coughs> with the, i mean what our developers have been able to do and so if you're not able to communicate properly the things that you are getting i mean we it will not be a very good thing for you so apart from having the core technical skills we ensure that you also have skills in attention to details problem solving and analytical skills and also communication and to be able to also collaborate properly so these are the basic things relating to quality assurance thank you um for those who just joined currently we are taking tips from the various aspects of the specializations we have for the graduate training program so we are done with front-end development back-end development quality assurance engineering so we'll be moving to ui ux design so if you have questions based on what these experts have said you could drop them in the chat box so with ui ux design we have our expert in the person of Lisa Marie Kunsen. So she will take us through the tips we need and the skills and the requirements we all need to submit a good application for UI UX design. So Lisa, if you are here, you could take over. Okay. Thank you, Christabel. So as mentioned earlier, my name is Lisa Marie and then I'm the instructor for UI UX design. Okay, so basically we are all going by the same requirements in regards to the recruitment process. So when you pass your um, aptitude test, then you get on to the interview. And then if you are able to pass the interview as well, then maybe you get an offer from recruitment. Now, um, what you are going to do or what is expected of you for the UI design track is that you should be proficient in any of the design tools. So it could be SD, Sketch, Figma, Illustrator, and then you should have projects on them to prove that um, you made those or you created those projects yourself. Okay, that is why you are asked to submit your account on Behance or Dribble if you have any. And then into the training, we are going to cover mostly um, the user experience part before the user interface part, because um, that is the popular one that we all know. We all launch onto YouTube or maybe Google generally, and then we look for um, maybe documentations or videos on Figma or something, but then we ignore the US part. So we are going to do user experience basics, go through the product development cycle, how you conduct research before you design. You are going to do the design process itself as well, where you understand the users very well. There are pain points, you create story maps and all that. And then we will do the user interface basics. So that is where you'll be introduced to. The design tool used here in Analytech is Figma, but then 
yeah so that is what we'll be using so that's what you'll be introduced to figma basically then we we'll go on to the advanced stage of figma where we we'll do more of wireframing and prototyping um, and then you get to master some of these visual elements as well and then how they should be used and are used then we move on to creating components because yeah, it is needed for us to do so we don't need to be recreating all the time when you have components and then we do some micro interactions you should know some design principles and us or ui best practices then in our last stage we'll be doing uh, more of testing so these are certain testing with the products we've created we'll have feedback sessions on the designs we've created and then we will have people criticizing our sessions as well so that will be that is basically that's for the ui us track so if you do qualify you are welcome or if you're already in then let's see what comes up yeah thank you thank you to lisa for sharing these insights with us so um, next we'll be answering questions um, we've compiled from the social from our social media platforms on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and on TikTok. So we've compiled some few questions. Our experts will be answering them for us. So the first question we have here is: Do you have to be unemployed to be able to apply? And I would like Sarah to take this for us. Um, so yes, please, if you're unemployed, you can apply because um, the training is one, it's in person and we need people who are willing to commit to um, the eight hours training. So if you're unemployed, you can apply. Thank you. The next question says, where will the UI UX design training take place? Please, all um, the various specializations, it's in person one and it will be held in Kumasi, our Kumasi office. So please take note. And will the training be online or in person? Please, it's in person. Okay, someone says, when is the actual starting date of the training? Emmanuel, could you take this for us? When is the actual starting date of the training? Um, okay, so it's in June next month. Um, the start date is on the 10th of June next month. Can a level 200 computer science students apply? No, Sarah. please. I'm sorry, but it's a no. And how long does it take to review applications? Um, it's, um, it's dependent, but approximately three weeks because we do receive a lot of applications in a day. A lot. This person says, I, have a, I am a graduate but i did not do my national service can i apply no please um you need to have completed national service before you can apply for the training program okay what about a person with a diploma in it and is currently in school for his degree does he also qualify to apply please are you through with your national service if yes you can apply okay um we have here i study software development and i have a certificate in back-end development can i apply thomas could you take this for us he says i have i study software development and i have a certificate in back-end development can i apply certificate unfortunately it doesn't meet the requirements the minimum is HND. The certificate is a little bit lower. So unfortunately, the person cannot apply. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. So next we have, um, I am interested in UI UX design, but I only have little knowledge about the required tools. Can I still apply? Lisa, could you take this? Yes, I think the person can still apply. Little knowledge is not equal to no knowledge, so it's fine. Okay. 
okay we have here is the training program free yes it is free and we have here i know about front-end development although i do not have a computer science certificate but i have an electrical engineering certificate can i still apply emmanuel can you take this um yeah you you can still apply as long as you know your stuff i think um that should that should um that should be fine so you can still apply go through the whole process um yeah yeah thank you emmanuel so that is all we have here for the questions um, we compiled from our social media platforms some of the questions have also been answered um on our social media platforms so we'll move to the questions that are currently being asked in the chat box so all rwanda questions um will be answered by christabel hello lisa yeah let me quickly clarify this before you move on to the comment sessions okay so the question on ui taking place in um where where is ui taking place so the UI will actually take place in Takradi. The training itself will take place in Takradi, but then in the capstone stage, um, you will have to move to Kumasi for that. And then, um, so no accommodation for provided by Amalitech for you in Takradi. But then when we are having the capstone in Kumasi, something you will be, you will be provided with accommodation. Just for UI. So, I hope I'm clear. Okay. Um, I'd want to. I would want us to clarify this again. Mm -hmm. So, UI UX design training is strictly mm -hmm. online, or is it going to be hybrid? Not online. Strictly online. Not online. In person. In, in person. person. Okay. okay. So for in, our capstone office project, in party. yes. Then for our okay. capstone pro project, you move to Kumasi for that. Okay. Okay. thank you for the clarification so um with questions from rwanda we have our recruitment representative who is taking care of all rwanda applications here precious she'll be handling or she'll be answering questions um about rwanda applications so the first question we have here in our chat box is It says, hello, I'm Ferdy from Rwanda. I have a question I would, want to, I would want to ask. I've already applied and taken technical assignments, but I failed them all. What can I, how can I do it again? Or can applications, let me take this again. Let me rephrase it. So she's asking, he or she is asking, can he, they retake the application or would the application be open for him or her to join again since he failed okay um thank you so much so fairly um i would only say that you get um some online courses to take to get abreast with yourself on the skills on your skills and you can actually reapply and it will, it will just be um, through that application that we would be sent the test again to take because if you know you have failed then there's some, definitely something wrong so I would advise you um, improve on your skill and you reapply. Thank you so much. Thank you Precious. So the next question we have here is please can you reiterate the stipend amount? Sarah? So um, it's thousand eight Ghana cities. So thousand eight Ghana cities monthly. Internet. And with the internet allocation, it's um, thirty gig monthly. Thank you. So Brian says, please, I have applied to back in track and pass the code signal but i haven't heard anything since i've sent an email and made the call but still nothing 
Um, so when did you complete the assessment? That is one. And then has your um, score been verified? So you can please give us a call. So Brian, could you also kindly send us your email privately so we address this properly for you? The next question is, I want to ask about the nature of the code signal pre-screening assessment. I don't know who asked the, the question, but it's a coding assessment. So then um, you log into the platform and which, um, which program language that works for you, please select that and run your codes. It's on data algorithms, data structures and algorithms, sorry. 